Come on. Call meeting order at 10 a.m. on Wednesday, uh, January the 29th. Uh, meeting of Long Beach County Commission. It's hereby called to order. Uh, Can you hear me now? Okay. Before I ask you to please stand for a moment of silent meditation and a pledge of the flag, I'd ask that in your moment of silent meditation, if you would keep uh, Tony Burrill and his family uh, in your thoughts. Exonerations, 23 listings for $7,011.80. Tax years 2011, 12, and 13. Fiduciary orders for January 15th and 20, uh, 29th, 2014. Uh, fourth quarter, 2013 Fiduciary Commissioner report from George Armistead. And third quarter report from Cynthia Stafford. Minutes from December the 4th and December the 11th, 2013. We also have vouchers, general county fund expenditures. 60,468.10, coal severance 41,228.41, magistrate court $34.99, 911 cash 1,849.16, Chestnut Ridge Park $4,839.29, home confinement $1,083.45, Mason Dixon Park 235.39, assessor's valuation 3,058.56, sheriff's forfeiture $2,750. For a total of 115 547.35. Uh, no miscellaneous bonds, and we have three budget revisions for the sheriff's office for law enforcement, uh, jail reimbursable, and home confinement. Move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Mr. Stump. Morning. Um, my name is John Stump. I'm an attorney with the law firm Stephen Johnson. And I didn't stay, I stayed at Waterfront Place last night, but I'm playing Tom Amon today. Let's just put it that way. So it wasn't a Holiday Inn Express, but we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll work did, off. Did he tell you about our smile rule? Yeah. No. no so you have a smile rule for Tom? Yeah, yeah. yeah, we had to indoctrinate him into a smile. Yeah. <laughs> Tom's a little, Tom, Tom's a little serious. But, but uh, he does, he does. Uh, <laughs> He's a little straight laced. Yeah. But he does exceptional work. Oh, he does. Yes. He's a great guy. He's a great and he guy. has learned to smile. Uh, yeah. Before you get your presentation, let me just ask you a quick question. Sure, of course. Is is this the same uh, resolution that Tom had presented us previously, only filled in some blanks? Um, no, Tom presented you with a resolution that was a reimbursement resolution. Oh, okay. Which protected your ability to reimburse yourself right. from bond proceeds. This this res or this ordinance actually, we have to call it an ordinance, and I know that's odd for the county commission to have a well a resolution and order. It, by statute, we have to call it a resolution and an order. Um, what this authorizes is the leasing of the Staggers building from the building commission, as well as well first it authorizes the transfer of the property to the building commission, and then the leasing back of the property from from the building commission to the county commission. Now, this is not for consideration today. This is not first reading. This is I'm merely here to explain what's going on, what the process is, and I know you all have work session this afternoon. If you all want to take this up and you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer them. Um, but I just want to make you aware of it. Now, the building commission is having their first meeting today at 1130. Now, they have to have three meetings total, whereas the county commission only has to have two. Two public meetings. Well, two, two meetings. Two readings. Two, two readings. Two, re right. two readings, okay. right. There's no public hearing requirement? Not for the county commission. Okay. There's right. the building commission. Right. Well, they have three public hearings? They, no, they have three meetings and a public hearing at the last group. No, at the last, the last okay. Right. okay, thank you. Right, no problem. Um, so, and we'll take care of all that. Um, but this, again, is just for inf informational purposes only. Um, we didn't want to drop it on you next week and not having seen it. 
And also, uh, I'll also let you know that we'll have on the agenda for next week approval to move forward with uh, title insurance uh, and survey work on the uh, Steigers building because we're going to have to have that um, in, in order to secure the, the, the bondholders. You realize that we have to get, uh, until December this year, we have to get GSA approval to make any transfer? No. I did not know that. That's good. That's that's good information, though. Yeah. That's important. Part, that's of that, part of the purchase, we are not allowed to transfer it to anyone for a period of three years. I thought it was two. Three is what uh, Diane. Diane thought it was uh, December of this year, but she looked it up for me, and she says it's December of 2000. Uh, or she thought it was December 2013, but she looked it up, and it's December of 2014. Because I recall during the the purchasing process that that uh, it was constantly two years was thrown out uh, as as the period of time that we would have to retain that building if there was ever any thoughts of. I didn't look it up. She just emailed me a couple was, weeks ago that it, it was three year uh, process was Dece December of 2014 14. that we can transfer it without GSA approval. December of 2014. Okay, well, we need to transfer it decidedly sooner than that. Um, well, so I think we were also told that we can ask GSA for the authorization to transfer the ownership. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, so then he gave us a waiver. I was just wondering. Well, right, you know, know we're going to have to get a waiver. Yeah, I mm -hmm. did not know that. That's good to know. So mm -hmm. we're, we're going to have to uh, get started on that right away. Um, I mean, I know they, it seems like they've been pretty good for you all to work with on this project, and uh, we wouldn't want a government shutdown or something to slow, to slow the project down. So thank you, Ellen. That's very, very, very good information. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions regarding the structure or, or anything like that of the, of the legal structure. Um, but that's the process. Tom will be here next Wednesday, and he's going to be here shortly for the for the for the UTC project. But um, if we could just get just for not for clarification, but after they meet the building commission meets today, if they could also tell us when they set up the next two meetings, especially the mm -hmm. public meeting ahead of time, then we could get that to the media, sure. just so you know, so they have that information ahead of time. And that's a call, and that's a conversation I will have with them. Okay, yeah, thank you. I mean, the next reading. If possible, if we can get people out for it and if Keith's available, right. we'll be next Wednesday. We'll just okay. do it in conjunction with your all's reading. Oh, okay. I mean, we'll not at the same time, right. right afterwards out in the hallway or whatever. And then we'll, um, and then we will, we'll need to have two weeks at least in between to allow for publication. Okay. One one of the other things, just to make sure that uh, Tom or, or someone will, will do the communication with GSA. Well, yeah, we, we will do that. We just need to have the information to, to make that the other person. And Bob, do you know, is there, do you have the person at GSA who we would contact, or at least we could start with on this waiver process? Yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. Well, if you can get that to Tom and I, or I can get it from you now, whatever, um, we will, yeah, we'll make that, the, that letter will go out tomorrow because this, I want to get that, I want to get that moving. The second thing that, that I would ask for is, is a projected time table mm -hmm. uh, um, because we have already uh, have a contractor selected. Sure, sure. Uh, and I think that's with a 90 day it is. Uh, implementation. It holds 90 days. And I think for everyone's sake, we need to know what our timetable is going to be you know so that we know when we can start the actual construction or renovations and we can set some kind of time frame from when that project will be completed right um i think that uh march 15 <coughs> is, is within the 90-day period and that's what is targeted as a closing date you know we we were going to have a meeting last week but because of weather and everything else weren't able to do it so it pushed us a week we're still going to be within the 90-day bid hold and, and may be able to do it sooner than March 15th. Okay. That's Good. just Tarry right now. No, we, no, I understand the significance of the 90-day bid hold completely. I've, I've talked to Tom Potts at Sealing. I understand where we are. And uh, we actually issued, uh, prepared a notice of, notice of notification of, qual of lowest qualified bidder to, uh, to the company, Mascaro, I think it's called. Um, Masaro. 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 I'm sorry, Masaro. Um, and yes. let them know, you know, they're the lowest qualified bidder, and um, so they're proceeding getting their stuff done, the payment performance bonds, insurance, and all that sort of thing that'll have to be reviewed. So the, and then Tom can do the construction contracts, but those should be the AIA forms, so American Institute Architect forms, so it shouldn't be anything out of the ordinary, I wouldn't think. 
Yeah, so. I, I think probably pretty standard. Yeah, you, they should be. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah. don't, I don't want unique <laughs> in those. Yeah, there's right. a reason those are written that way. Uh, yeah. That's all the questions I have at this time. Okay, me too. We appreciate your work. Okay, well. Mr. Bartolo, would it be proper for one of the judges to ask a question on this matter? It would be a little bit out of normal procedures, but I don't really see any major problem with it. Uh, if there's no sure. objection, sure. Uh, do I understand that we're, that we're proceeding and everything should be ready to go with construction to begin the, the March 15th or thereabouts? Yes, Your Honor. We will have the... the financing closed on March 15th, which will then allow the county commission to sign construction contracts. So I'd say April 1, okay. realistically, they'll start construction. Okay, and I noticed that um, during the work session later today, there's going to be a discussion about selling the federal building. And that was concerning to me. Uh, why would we be doing all of this if we're still thinking about selling the federal building? That's not the issue. Judge. Well, that's what it says. Discussion well, of selling federal we can't bills. discuss it. We don't do anything in secret here. We don't do backroom discussions. We do things out in the open. We ha I have been approached by a number of people, and I know a couple of the other commissioners have, that why are we spending $20 million for a third courtroom? And that there's been conversation that we get $15 million out of that building and build what we need right back here. Now, None of us say we're in favor of that. But we have an obligation as stewards of the money of this county when someone brings up an alternative idea to discuss it in open forum. That's why that's on there. We're going to have public hearings. You already heard there's going to be meetings and there's going to be public hearings. Okay. The people know what need to know what the issues. Before that is discussed, before any of us, take it and discuss it with any third party. The three of us, out of respect for one another, discuss it in open, public comment. We don't cut anyone off and we don't degrade anyone. That was an issue that was brought up. That's an issue the people need to know. They need to know that water projects are gonna stop. That I got just came from, from the Charleston. The report from the governor's office, the report from the house office, the report from uh, Senate president's office, all three of them said federal money for the next two to three years is done. We're not getting any federal money. State money has stopped. Matter of fact, they'll be cutting money to the counties. So county budgets are going to go down. We have been, we have been successful here in county, but to just assume automatically that where we can't face a debt crisis. It is just erroneous. And it's our, our three's obligation to make sure that's not a problem. It's also our obligation, and I don't care who it is, one citizen comes up and says, I think you ought to talk about this. It is our obligation to talk about it among the three of us because there's no king here. It's the three of us together. That's why it's on there. Okay, well, I, th I think you can probably understand my concern as chief judge, and I've made it known to the commission <coughs> how important this project is to me. It's not one more courtroom. It's bringing our judicial system into the 21st century. All right? Well, I and, understand that. Yes. Excuse me, may I finish? Yes, I understand that. And so I think it's just civil courtesy that when there's discussion about selling the federal building, that those that are going likely to be affected by the selling of the federal building knows that this is going to be discussed. Now, I see this in the agenda. I don't get the agenda. All I know is that for the judges to get any information on, on this federal building project, has been very difficult, to say the least. Now, I, I spoke with you earlier today, and because of my concern, you thought I was arrogant and egotistical, and because I'm interested in this project. Wait, and, let me and stop you right there. Let me stop you right there. 
When someone says to me, now listen here, young man. No, I didn't. Yes, you did say that. I wouldn't call you, I wouldn't call you, you young you man. You called me exactly, young man, and there's witnesses okay, that were sitting in my I'm office. I'm not going to argue with so, right you. No, you, you, you cannot argue that point. Now, you're the one that hung up on me, sir. I, I tried to talk to you in a perfect... Okay, guys, let's... Let's not back in school. Let, let me interview you. <laughs> let me interview you. <laughs> you know, I, I think this is something that's certainly worthy of discussion. Uh, and it will be. Uh, and it will be in, in the work session. Uh, please understand that there's no decisions made. Please understand that there is no preformed, even on all three commissioners, as far as I know, any interest in selling the federal bill. Uh, now, the discussion will be open, uh, and I would certainly think at that time we would, we would allow anyone that would have a comment that could provide... Well, I would, I would hope that the commission would recognize that, that the interest of the judiciary uh, in this building is, is significant. And uh, I, I also know that uh, those in Charleston, the Supreme Court consider, considers this to be a significant event for Montegate County and for the state of West Virginia. And simply by inquiring whether there's discussion, there's serious discussion about selling the federal government is not a hope considered by the commission to be arrogance on that part as chief judge or some, uh, some egotistical moment that I might have. Now, I, I, I'm, this commission knows that I'm passionate about this project. Not for me, but for the, but for the people of this town. Because it's time that we bring the judiciary into the 21st century in this town. That's all. So if I make inquiry, I would hope that I would get a reasonable response from someone about a simple inquiry is if there's any, if there's any serious discussion about selling the federal bill. Well, okay. Just for a clarification, thank you, Your Honor. To give you an idea, on the agenda also at 3 o'clock is a uh, discussion about WVU campus housing. Now, they've already started the building of it. There seems to be some questions and concerns right now by people in the community. So that's why we put it on the agenda. Yeah, here. So that's basically what we're trying to do. And Hopefully, you know, we can get these issues resolved. So, and, that, I, and clearly, that's what we're trying to do. And I understand that. Okay. I and mean, that's clear to me now. Okay. And, uh, but but uh, the response that I got earlier wasn't clear to me, yeah. and, and I was quite offended. Okay. Well, okay. Yeah. So, okay. it's just miscommunication. I want, I want one other thing. I don't care who you are. You call me a young man and try to put me down and degrade me, like you did over my, my projection of how much this project would cost down here, $20 million. You stood right back there and did it. I won't take it. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're a governor. I don't care if you're king. I don't care who you are. I will not be degraded. Well, Let's, all but, and I expect an apology from you for the way you acted. The one thing that I would like to bring to both attentions, please, <laughs> is that this subject is not even on the agenda. It's on for the work session. Well, and, and none of us were privileged to any conversation between yeah. your honor and, and, and Commissioner Callan. So we're sort of in the dark here in terms of what this discussion is going on. About. I'm used to it. <laughs> uh, and, and so what I would hope is that uh, we could continue Clarify it in this. our work session. And, Clarify. And, and I understand, Judge, I'd just like to sort of give you, I understand your concerns uh, because I understand the reason why we purchased that building in the beginning. Uh, and, and I can assure you that before any decision is made to sell that building, that there's going to be very thorough discussion if, it, if any decision is ever reached to sell that building. All right. Well, uh, thank you mm -hmm. for here. Appreciate you for showing up. We'll see you later. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Pace is canceled. Renetta Grants. Okay, now you're going to make up for last yeah. because we didn't have a meeting last week. So. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, we'll get the reimbursements out of the way first. Uh, the first one, you don't actually have to sign it, but we did an electronic uh, transaction with the uh, Department of Justice for the drug court program for 
uh, October 2013 through December of 2013, 22,198.62. The Governor's Community Participation Grant Program for Main Street Morgantown, $12,000. We also have uh, Bureau of Senior Services for Triune uh, Community Center. Um, we got the carpet done. JB and I went out and looked at it. It looks great. So we're going to pay the, go ahead and pay oh, the good. bill and get the repairs from, from the grant. Are they happy? Yes, they're happy. <laughs> they're happy. <laughs> That's where they're through. Okay, there's three of those. Do we want to do them on an individual basis? Mm, we'll do the reimbursements at one time okay. and then we'll do the no other problem. Things. Uh, we have the HUD grant for December of 2013, 822.80. And the Emergency Solutions Grant Program for RDVIC, Caritas House, and the Bartlett House, 3,341.03. And we also have the JABG grant for MAYSP for December of 2013. Uh, the first one is 782.80. The second is 10863. And that's all the reimbursements I have today. Move for acceptance of the reimbursements. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Okay. We also have uh, the contract for the Governor's Community Participation Grant Program for the Mon County Sheriff's Department for program materials for the DARE program. Just requesting. President's signature. Move for acceptance. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, the last thing I have is the um, HUD grant, uh, Community Development Block Grant. It's through Morgantown. They're the recipient of the grant. We are a sub-recipient for MAYSP. They're requesting $11,950. And uh, we are the pastor for MAYSP. Good. Move for approval. Second. I have a motion for approval and a second. All in favor signify saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. <coughs> uh, Tom Amon, is he here yet? Tom? Yes. Uh, what about? Uh, right. so there's a pace for check No, they cancel. They cancel. They cancel. There's, there's no okay. school today. <laughs> oh, there's no school again today? No, no the teachers went. Just the staff oh. after a portion. Uh -huh. Biodiesel fuel. You have my partner still around? I think uh, he, 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 he was there. <laughs> the judges may have drug him out. Yeah, he, yeah. he <laughs> ran off real fast. <laughs> Things you guys. I, oh, good. I, I need to confer with him. Okay. <laughs> now he has talked to us previously about the uh, the other the, 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 yeah. 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 transfer of ownership. I told him he's got to Poor trees. The book again. Okay. Yeah, so. Do we want to move on to like unfinished business for the since it's not 10 30? I want to. I want to this for a minute. Okay, we're going to move. We're going to move on in, uh, in our agenda, and then we'll get back to you, Tom. Uh, correspondence. No correspondence. <laughs> Unfinished business. There's all technical review. Uh, of course, that involves. Yeah. Tom. So we better go next. Well, why do we have to formally dissolve it? Yeah. Because I think you formally made it. We had the yeah, but, but I mean, it's, it's a new group is formed. The design build. The design build technical is is dissolved. Oh, and so then we got to Yeah, and then remember there's that new I group. Bobby was going to speak to. <laughs> yeah, go we lost Bobby else. too. Yes. The yeah. judges dragged him off too. <laughs> Man, they have to at least respect our agenda. <laughs> uh, this kind of stuff. Okay, let's move on to the DOH agreement for placement of Hartman and Bridge. Yeah. Long overdue. Yes. Uh, I guess everybody's had a chance to look over it. And we have a recommendation, I think, from Phil Magro that it's yeah, it's a, a good agreement. Yeah, uh, it covered all the things uh, we, we talked about. I, I read it uh, again in its final form uh, this morning. Uh, the, uh, 
we, we give them the five hundred thousand dollars. We give them the second uh, five hundred thousand at the end of this month, and we get paid back on the city mortgage down. Uh, they they will upon signing and the first five hundred thousand dollars, they will prepare uh, they will prepare the uh, uh, transfer documents, and they will tend to immediately seek contracts on it. Uh, they. One million dollars will be placed into an escrow account, and then uh, to to pay the twenty percent. Uh, if the twenty percent turns out to be less than one million dollars after the project is completed, will be refunded the difference. If it turns out to be more, uh, uh, if if the cost the twenty percent is more than one million dollars, we don't have to pay any more right. than one million dollars. So it covered everything we wanted. So. I would move we approve it and authorize the president to sign the second. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor signify saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Hallelujah. Uh, <laughs> engagement letter for Cruz and Associates Investment Bankers for Justice Center Bond issue. Mr. Secretary, prepared that. Uh, Mr. Secretary, prepared that. Have you all seen this? No, I read it. You have read it? I've read it. I read it this morning. Okay. Any mm -hmm. concerns or questions? Not really. Uh, there, were, there was. Uh, this might be the right time to do it. There was some, some question that raised to me about uh, some of the questions I asked, and I wanted to assure Piper Jeffrey that those were not my questions. Those were questions submitted to us in email, and the position was that. If the bonds are so much, then there's something wrong, and you shouldn't do that. And I wanted all I wanted was your whether you agreed with those things in the email. So if there was any feeling that that uh, that those ideas came up from me, they weren't. It came from someone else, and I wasn't accusing anybody. Anyone. I was just, as you can see, I just ask questions. <laughs> And I don't mean disrespect to anyone, and, and if someone feels that way, I certainly apologize to that. But uh, uh, Judge Guizot, he, he clearly uh, attempted to grade us in this panel this morning, and I won't tolerate it. And so if you felt that some of my questions were out of line, I apologize. I didn't mean them to be. I just based them on what uh, was submitted to us in emails by Cruz and Associates. So. If it's all right, they can comment. If you, would you allow them to? Sure. If you have any comment, would you like to make? I just, uh, you know, we always appreciate the opportunity to work with the county. We've had great working relationship over the years. Right? You know, obviously, close the transaction. We've worked on several years together. Um, we certainly wanted the opportunity. That's a, you know, we viewed the courthouse as historic. You know, the work that you're going to be doing on that. Uh, it's been a long year. Obviously, doing multiple proposals, and we just want you to know we put our best proposal forward. Uh, something we really wanted to do, uh, but we, you know, also understand that you all have to make a decision based on everything that you have in front of you. And um, I don't know, is there anything else that you want to say, Brian? No, I, I just I think we were just a little taken. We were a little bit surprised because we had put a schedule <laughs> in our proposals and our subsequent. That it was going to that we did have to go through the legal process before we could issue bonds, and I think we were just shocked that day. We weren't prepared. We thought we we didn't know that there were going to be questions asked of us last week or the week before last. And I think we were a little bit surprised when it was kind of like you know we thought you could get this done sooner, and we were very clear in all of our proposals and subsequent that it was going to we had to go through a process of. of the legal part being done, and we have no control over that. We just wanted to make sure that you didn't think that we were trying to switch something on you, telling you one thing, and then telling you, oh, now we can't do that. So that was the only that's, what, that's what I was trying to explain, that yeah. I was not saying that. Yeah. Yeah, there were right. things written to us in the email, which I told Diane, make sure you all had copies of. So yeah, I apologize, have, I apologize yeah. you didn't get yeah. copies of those, because yeah. I told, told her specifically that you all needed copies of those before that meeting. Yeah, uh, but know. but uh, but that's what I've tried to explain. I was just taking things that were written in that email and posing you the questions. We and I thought you had copies of the email. No, we did. We, we were, were shocked. We, well, we came in here to do yeah. on the other deals, so we were yeah, shocked. We would, like, we would just like to say to that regard that um, we we were 
completely taken by surprise. Our understanding was we were working on the project, and we had the structure you're looking at was well vetted with various councils uh, based on the work we did. We would have handled if we knew it was a Q&A or a, another interview, which we had already gone through, we would have handled our uh, responses. Uh, if we knew if it was a competition, for instance, with our competitor, we would have handled, if we thought that we weren't hired, we were understanding you were here to approve our engagement letter, we would have handled those questions differently. We would have been, I think, we would have made a much greater effort to differentiate ourselves and the work that we've done in this area, which is unmatched with leases. So it, it, instead, what we were trying to do is to be kind of cordially answer the questions and, and let you know that your counsel and, and legal work that needs to be done was, was substantial regardless of who you work with. And uh, we were prepared to close you know, price those bonds the day after if necessary, but the process was going to delay your project, not the not the financing. The, the one th comment that I would have is that uh, I apologize if, uh, if if there was any miscommunications about what the expectations were. And, and uh, I think uh, if no, no other uh, effect, uh, we will ensure that that doesn't happen again. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, we were saying we want you, uh, our relationship is very important with you all, so we don't want to walk out there. As is ours You're to yours. That's up, why I even brought this, work this we, issue uh, up because I, I, I got feedback that, yeah. that I was doing something that I was not doing. Yeah. I think just more the, you know, the way, the way it was handled, the way, yeah, well, we, we were just caught if, off completely. Yeah. If, off if I can say for clarification, <laughs> yeah, I apologize, cutting you off, but for clarification, and it was it was unfortunate you weren't at the no one was at the uh, committee of the okay, I keep calling the committee works, of the whole the, the work session. session we had a lot of questions and even when we left it was still technically up in the air and it was stated and, and we didn't get back to you clear enough that there were some questions still to be answered and, and it's a miscommunication I mean and what we have learned from the county commission now is we've made it very clear that we will only do anything when it's done in the works that was part our fault too so and I think all three and of us when it's done, and when it's on the agenda which I yeah think makes and all three of us it will be on the agenda thank you and there was confusion so again that was that was the specific so that's where you know I would apologize because there was still confusion it was still up in the air there were still some questions to be answered and we have learned from this and hopefully this won't happen and not to you but to anyone else it was just a mix-up Thank if you. I can say that. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And I just want to, one other clarification for the record and, and uh, that's in this document before we move it is just so we're both on the same wavelength. Uh, Tom Amon's associate mentioned he would have it done before March 15th and clearly the, the holding periods by March 18th. So just so both parties are you in agreement. You want to ask Tom Ammons that question? Yeah, he's right there. I can him see him looking at it. <laughs> I know. That's why I, I thought maybe you want to ask him a question. Well, I just want to make sure that since you didn't hear, but since uh, Cruz is saying they're going to have it within the 90 days, which is by March 15th, and you're saying 90 days, then everyone's in agreement. So we just, yeah. I want that as part of the record that we are still, even though we were delayed a week, in in the time period, in that 90 day, what what's yeah, it called? We, we have a okay. pit hole. Pit hole. The 90 day pit hole. Okay. And I just want to clarify that for the record so anyone or the judges have any and, questions on and that. And in fairness to Piper Jeffrey, they would have met the same time. Oh, I know they would. Yeah. yeah. The legal issues, as Joe said, the legal issues are more. Yes. Are more our, are more the, the timing problem than the actual financing. And they can't, yeah. no one can sell bonds until we've had the ordinances enacted, et cetera. Okay, so I move that we uh, move forward on the uh, engagement letter for Cruz and Associates. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, lowest bidder, uh, notice of lowest qualified bidder. That's what that letter he just talked about. To, right. It doesn't say that we're going into a contract just to notify Nacero that they are the lowest qualified bidder so they know that um, as soon as we get all the funding in place that we can engage in a contract. Has this been run by Tom? I, I, yeah, I actually drafted it. Oh, you it. saw it? Oh, I drafted yeah. it. Yeah, they, <laughs> yeah I read Tom, it. Tom, okay. Tom Potts sent Bill something and Bill sent it to Tom 
Tom was busy with UTC. Okay. I, I, re, I redrafted it. And the reason that, and there's no reflection on Tom, oh, Tom yeah, notice of award, sure. notice of intent, and lowest qualified bidder, those those are terms of art, and they have certain legal connotations with right. them. So we didn't want to give them a conditional notice of intent to award it 90 days out, but give them some, give them some, uh, allow them to feel like we're, we are moving forward. Okay. Do I have a motion? So okay. move. Yeah. Okay. We authorize the president to sign. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, motion carried. Okay, now we go back to uh, Mr. Andy. Sure. I'm going to suggest that you all go into executive session to before, numbers. before we uh, take out the final consideration of the bond order. Uh, there's a couple things that we should go over. Uh, I think it'd be most appropriate to do that in executive session. It relates to um, attorney-client privilege type items. Um, so that would be my recommendation that you all adjourn into executive session to take those up and then come back and then we can go over formally the consideration of the bond order. Let me ask you a question, uh, Tom. Uh, uh, that's probably going to take up a little bit of time, I would imagine. Uh, do you have any problem for us expiring the rest of our agenda here so that we don't hold people up to wait to Absolutely. come back in? Uh, and then we, then we can go into executive session on Absolutely. the matters that you brought forth. So let's move on to new business. Uh, Bob is here now to do dissolve uh, technical review. Oh, dissolve yeah. technical review board. Yeah, what, uh, what we want to do is we uh, did the committee for the ballpark for the technical advisory committee, and that was so that all the uh, plans could be put together, and it was a way that... Uh, everybody for the county commission who you put on there we've seen fit that uh, we've got everything in place now that everything is in place and it's in the hands of the architect we don't need the technical advisory committee anymore because there's not going to be any changes as the way it's going to be built so it's just like the federal building the justice center uh, we have a contractor and we have you know their wbu and we have me representing the county if that's the way that, that's what they ask that you know so we don't need everybody at the meeting trying to change things because we put everything in perspective the way that everybody wanted so do we dissolve this and then create another committee or we dissolve this and that's it it's it okay. we just have one representative wv has one representative and we have a contractor but there is a committee so, so you'll be our representative yeah yes okay because there's there is no changes anymore once it's sent right. to uh the blueprints are getting made. There is going to be no changes on the structure anymore. So nothing for the technical review committee to do. Right. You'll just oversee it on behalf, as you do for all our for projects. Committee. For the commission. You're right. I'd move we dissolve the technical review committee for design bill process for the ballpark. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Just uh, on, on all your behalf, um, you know, like uh, we had uh, uh, the Bow Park representative. Uh, Joe, uh, uh, well, Joe, uh, he's here, and you know we wanted to make sure we got all the the sound stuff in place and all that, uh, the plugs and everything, and that was done. We have uh, the covering over the seating, uh, the playground, the picnic little area there is going to be there on the outside of the gate, so it can be used even when the ballpark is oh, not in good. use. So all that's being put into. Uh, the plans and the contract, so it's all going to be done in that direction. Have, have we uh, taken the posters that were made up and put down in the lobby area of the courthouse? It was there the second day you guys come back mm -hmm. from Charleston. Thank you. I would like to make another motion uh, that we uh, prepare a letter for the president to sign or for all three of us to sign, uh, thanking each member of the technical yeah. review committee for their work and effort on, on this project. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Anything else? Uh, new business. Any new business? Renetta? Uh, courts from the county commissioners. I, let me just start off. There's just one concern that I have is that there was an article in the paper about 911 fees. Uh, and I think since then there's been some clarification made by Mike Wolf. Uh, that this uh, 
reported increase from uh, what dollar thirty to four dollars is certainly has not been approved, uh, and and uh, we at least I would intend that we'll have an agenda that will uh, scrutinize the uh, requested increase in that fee. Uh, like all other budget matters, we will want uh, the projections of uh, where the mm -hmm. uh, increased funding is needed, mm -hmm. how it will be spent, and exactly what is the amount that we need to raise. Uh, we certainly uh, should have learned our lesson with the property taxes uh, here a year or so ago. and, and uh, we we need to keep a watchful eye on public funds and certainly i'm very strongly opposed to any new taxes so there has to be a strong justification to increase costs to the the taxpayer of this county for any issue uh, and i just want to issue that uh, assurance to uh, the public that uh, we're not going to pass increases this commission is not going to pass increases i think the other commissioners and i are in agreement that it's going to serve the public interest or we're just not going to do it. Uh, and uh, I just want, want, to, want to make that a matter of record. Uh, I think it's important that people understand that uh, we're not a tax and spend county commission. Uh, other than that, uh, Commissioner Cowan. Okay, a couple of things I'll start with the 911 fee. Uh, uh, issue as well because I just came back from uh, Charleston as I said previously um, that that increase in 911 fee, fees is on the agenda of the legislature down there for, for cell phones and and demand so uh, they might be decreasing increasing it uh, also as I said earlier we need, we need to be very cognizant of the economic condition uh, in the in the state and in this country, um, the, the 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 Fed's money has, and it was reported, the Fed's money has virtually been shut down. We're not going to get we're not going to get the federal funds. Uh, the state they're having difficulties, uh, uh, great shortfalls, and they're looking at different money sources, primarily taken from the county and giving it to the state. Which we don't know what what that effect's going to be, but. So, so we, and, and one of the things that the County Commissioner Association, and every, every commission talk, commissioner talks about, and it's important to, to, to keep this in mind. And, and it's not true, it's not true for most of our, most of our uh, elected officials. Uh, and I say most, not all, but most. Uh, is the lack of respect by constitutional officers for the difficult job that the three commissioners have in trying to keep taxes down, provide the necessary services, and give the funding. Now, uh, I see the sheriff here, and I say he's probably one of the best to, to work with us and, and, and help us understand and accepts, uh, and, and I accept his respect for us in, in that very difficult task. Uh, I also let you know that uh, you're the president of that uh, West Virginia Association of County. I'm now board representative on on that, so I'll be down there to, to watch you. <laughs> you can teach me the ropes. Uh, I'll welcome your help. Do, do, you, do you have anything that, uh, and I should have mentioned this, I didn't earlier, but uh, you sat in on the meeting of the assessor in the tax department? Oh, yes. I hadn't got to that yet. Oh, okay. I'm, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> That was down on my list, um, and, uh, and anyway, that, that that is probably one of the most difficult tasks uh, of any elected official uh, at the county level is the, the commission job trying to balance the taxes with the financial needs, and in it, I I. I told when we had that discussion. I told the group that that uh, generally uh, we had a very very good working relationship with our constitutional officers, and that we are respected and um, and treated well, and, and in in accepting the fact that we do have a very difficult job there. 
so we have funding obligations that's going to continue, and we got to be we got to be very cognizant of that. And I think Commissioner Bartolo said it well. I mean, we we are we are very very careful about where the money goes and how it's being spent, and most importantly. We want to make sure that the people, all the people, Montague County knows where the money's gone and why it's gone there. Uh, the uh, I, I would also this is this is the third time uh, that I've heard this from the judges, so I'm going to make it a formal motion because I've requested this in the past. But I want to make it a motion. I would like to make a motion that a copy of our agenda be sent to the judges along with all the other constitutional officers. They've complained about this repeatedly and I've asked that that be done, so I would move that an agenda be cop sent to all the elected officials, including magistrates and judges. That would be work session agenda also, correct? Yes. Okay, so just the, yeah, I'll, I'll second that, if making sure that the work session is put in there. Yeah. I, I think it's a void that needs closed, and uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. And then the, the last thing I wanted to bring up before I went to, to Charleston, I went uh, with the assessor. I don't know if uh, uh, our assessor of music is here or not. No, he's at uh, Charleston. Oh, that's right. It, it, it's down for that. They were really, su they were really surprised. They were sort of taken back. Um, uh, for a commissioner to actually show up on the board property, uh, uh, did, did Mark tell you that, that how they were sort of taken back? Yes, he the, did. He said he appreciated the support, though. Yeah, and uh, you know, I basically explained to him, and I saw again in the paper, uh, and, and I talked to the legislators about this down there. Uh, the way the law, the way the law is written. Uh, they talk about these percentage and the school board's all in a big panic. My position, and it's based on the, what we went through in 2012, and what we discovered was that the key to these percentages is not so much the percentage, it's the accuracy of the fair market value. What is the true accuracy of the fair market value? Their position is that it's what's in the computer. My position, it's what the Board of Review and Equalization says it is. And the way the law was written, it even goes back, I think, to March. Is that right, Trevor? Yes. Yeah. And I, I firmly believe that, uh, that a court challenge, if they, the legislature does not fix this, a court challenge would prevail. Uh, on, on this idea that they're going to cut money based on uh, a number, based on a fair market value number that we proved in 2012, if they didn't use all the variables, if they didn't use all the power of that computer, there's artificial inflation in that program. It's not like the NADA. It's not like the NADA book where, where you go and, and you're looking at a price for a car. You got the base model, and then you add this, and you add this. You may take this away. One or two things may be taken away if it's standard instead of automatic. But you add this, you add this, you add this, you add this. The computer program, the way it's designed that I, that I learned, it starts with the most expensive model. And then the variables subtract down. So if you don't use all the variables in that computer system, which I think is a great computer system, you've got artificial inflation. And I know it's complex. It, it, I, I understand it. And I try to make it as simple <laughs> as I can, but I don't know if I'm qualified enough to make it simple. Well, if, if I may interject something, because I think we both, and I think all three of us, uh, think along the same lines on this computer program hmm. and uh, you know computers only do what people tell them mm -hmm. to do and the one thing that I think that validates our concerns and certainly invalidates the state tax department's position with this computer program is that they themselves have set standards for assessor's office that property should be uh, appraised at 90 to 110 percent 
they have forgotten about the taxpayer. For a taxpayer to be be uh, assessed at 20% over value, if if not immoral, it certainly has to be illegal. Uh, particularly when the law calls for fair market value in in appraisals. So. I think it's inherent in the state tax department's position uh, by their own actions that they invalidate the basis they use to arrive at uh, appraised values. Uh, and and uh, I think it's our job, and I think we've tried to do that as well as we can, to point that out to the state tax department. And I can assure the taxpayer that uh, we will continue to point that out to the state tax department. <laughs> But, but I just wanted to make that to, to support yeah. what you're saying. I, I'm, I'm well, glad you did, and, and, I, I, and I want to close, close by this. Um, the, our assessor's office and the staff of our assessor's office, I, I was greatly impressed by. And my, my comments down there was, was not to argue this legal debate. If I need to get into a room with the lawyers again, like I did two years ago, I will go argue the legal debate. Uh, but my focus was that I know that our assessor's office is working the system, finding the data, looking everything they can so that those fair market values that are set by the computer are the true fair market values. That's what I told that committee. I know that the people at this assessor's office is committed to, to make those values correct and to bring the other values up in line. And uh, so I, I was adamant uh, about, about our commitment to supporting the assessor in that effort. The, about the only question I had, which was an interesting question, but it opened the door for, for a dissertation, like I have a tendency of doing, given a dissertation. Mm -hmm. if, no, if, you no. question, <laughs> if you ask me a question, if you ask me a question, I'm going to answer every aspect of it. Uh, but they, that one of the questions, I'm not sure which exactly which one asked me, uh, but she said, she said, well, when you did those 1,500 plus hearings on, on properties, uh, did you find that uh, most of them were accurate? <laughs> I busted out laughing. I said, absolutely not. 75 to 85 percent of uh, the properties that we heard had PF11 errors on it. It's the, the data on the, the, they were not described right. The, the market, uh, the fair market value properties were not described right. The neighborhoods were not right. There was at least, and then there was another 25% that had that, had that uh, artificial inflation in it. And I had to explain all that. But anyway, I get, gave her a dissertation on that, and I'm not going to do that again. Okay. But, uh, I, wa I wanted to, uh, to say that on behalf of the commission, uh, I, I went down, supported our assessor's office, and, uh, they, uh, and that uh, we, we are confident that we're going to move along, that this is not going to be a problem in the future. They, the, the, we did get one praise. We were praised uh, for uh, funding this GIS system. Mm. They say that it, it is uh, absolutely necessary to make that computer system yeah. work and get those neighbors right, neighborhoods right, is to know exactly where where lines are and, and everything. So, uh, Just for the record, uh, I'd certainly like to thank you for carrying out the wishes of the commission. Mm -hmm. uh, you represent us very capably with the state tax department in history. Uh, supports that uh, so I uh, thank you oh. okay uh, just a couple issues uh, just I wasn't going to talk about uh, the assessor situation but I, I want to explain being the new person on the block my dilemma um, I don't understand that we're we're three of us are gonna have to sit for five days or six or seven days of having board of equalization hearings and a minimum and a minimum and, and here's my concern my dilemma is how do I even consider lowering doing fair market value when the state has already mandated us that if we're not at the 90%, then the school system's gonna lose $2 million. So I'm being threatened by, this is my dilemma, I'm being threatened by the state saying, if I lower these, then you're not gonna make 90%, therefore this county's gonna lose $2 million. That is a concern that I think the three of us 
think is wrong, and I believe the three of us will actually, I believe, could take legal action if, that, if it goes to that state, because we have, to, we have to have the right to be able to look at someone coming in fairly and making a decision. I right. still know where the regional jail is. I don't have any problems <laughs> on there let, if they don't let, let me just add one <laughs> yeah. Let me just add one and thing. And that's a concern. Add ahead. one thing, Tom. Yeah. Is is sometimes we have to be careful about what we're told because the Board of Education went from losing hundred and eighty thousand dollars to losing four million dollars. The the other thing is is that the procedure for the Board of Equalization Review is, is that the, if the taxpayer presents evidence right. that the the appraisal is wrong then that's all we need to change it. Uh, the, uh, the tax department's threat or, or inference, whatever you want to take mm -hmm. it, that if we're not at 90% uh, or 110% uh, right. that they're going to withhold funds, well, our reaction to that remains to be uh, <laughs> demonstrated at this point. But I think what we have to rely upon is our conscience, right. our ethics, and what serves the best interest of the people and the taxpayers of Longgate County. And I think the three of us are going to do that. And, but that's the, as you said, moral dilemma. That's the dilemma that I face when everyone comes before me. The second thing, and I'm glad, again, the sheriff is here, and I'm going to, it's going to ask his advice. Uh, one of my advices is I listened to the Kay and Jim show, and numerous people were calling in about the area, which is a disaster I know that you're having to deal with, around the pilot gas station. Uh, this week, there was like four trucks broken down. There was traffic back to the interstate. It, I mean, it was a really bad situation. What, unfortunately, the people calling blamed the county commissioners, and I, I, I didn't even know what to say because I don't even, you know, we have no, and you had no say, when they built that property, the pilot went in there. They were allowed to do that because that's the law, correct? Right. Are there any suggestions that maybe we can look at with the DOH? Because it's becoming a continuing problem. I don't know if the DOH is, if they're going to have to cut out some more, take some property. But, you know, that 150 yards is a disaster, you know, in the snow. Even when it isn't in the snow, it's, you know, there's more potholes there than, you know. I, you know, I feel like it's a way to Middle Earth you know, if you want to walk through that. So um, I'm throwing it out to you. I don't know, do you have any suggestions? Because as these people are ranting and raving about the county commissioners, I mean, I'm more than willing to respond, but I don't even know what to say. What, do you have any suggestions? Because you know what, you know the area, it's, it's bad. <laughs> or should we come back at a later time to talk about it, I mean. Well, really, the, the idea off the top of my head is yes. it's absolutely a DOH issue. Okay. Um, when that building went in there, I think everybody knows that Route 73 or Smithtown Road and that intersection was never designed for that heavy traffic, right. that volume of traffic all the time, and that's what's breaking down that road. Uh, the other day, the specific day you're talking about was because of snow and ice on the road. That, that's what caused the backup right. that day. Uh, we got calls about it, too. And your other analogy is absolutely correct, too. It is DOH. And the only way I can look at it, the only answer I have is they'll have to take a look at that intersection and see if there's something they can do, put in another lane maybe there right. to get traffic through there quickly off of the interstate, have just one lane coming as an exit, and have another lane that is specifically for traffic coming out of the pilot. Um, Should we send... It's a difficult yeah. situation. Should we send a letter? I mean, is it proper to send a letter to the DOH saying there's been numerous complaints and give a list of some of the, the problems because it blocks all that north-south traffic and no one can, can go anywhere and just ask them to look into it because the roads cave in it. I mean, as you know, they've probably, you know, basically it needs to be dug out and redone, but that's only part of the problem. The other problem is the trucks not being able to see. They come out in the road, you have a 50 mile an hour road. So would that be permittable if they go. Well, uh, you could write one individually or if you oh, want one for all three of us, you could write, I, we can make a motion to write one for all three of us. Uh, yeah, and you know, since my relationship with DOH is so well, I'd, I'd like to do it with all three of us. <laughs> okay. If, if I can move that up, work of writing a letter, voicing our concerns about the pilot and that, that intersection. Is that a motion? Yes. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor signify saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, so carried. at least it shows that we are trying. Anything um, else? Yeah, the third thing is 
Friday, um, I attended my first and hopefully last uh, trial that was just a horrible tragedy that um, affected, you know, our, our county, our school system, and, and our community. And, and, and with the sheriff and the chief here, and, and Gary, I don't see him, I, I want to publicly say how honored I was, though, the professionalism that the bailiffs were, how they monitored the situation, clearly showed concerns and feelings towards all parties involved, and also kept a very professional mood. It, it was bad and tough enough being there. I, and I personally want to thank you, and it, it, to please, I want to publicly thank your bailiffs and the way it was handled. I really, it wasn't a good situation, but the only thing I, could, I can say positive was how it was handled, how the media was handled, and how the community dealt with it. And I again want to thank you, and please pass that on to all the officers and bailiffs, because that was an exceptional thing that you did. Um, and the final thing, so this is a real short one, I'm asking that the sheriff, uh, Kelly, and a representative from the assessor's office be at our meeting today at three o'clock. I believe we need you all there. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, elected official, sheriff. Quickly, I promise. <laughs> thank you all got a letter from the uh, Dermis Highway Safety Program about a grant that we received. Did you get it? Yeah, I uh, saw. So. I'll give you a copy. It was addressed to you, but oh, it was. Maybe they didn't deliver. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're still delivering the album. That's, that's, that's all. Again. No. But I just kind of really wanted to explain. Um, yeah, this is first. This what is first this was. Time it's it's a three thousand dollar grant that we got from the uh, governor's highway safety, and it gives you the technical term of what they were or what we're purchasing with that grant and it's called CDR DLC it's a crash data retrieval base kit accessory kit and software uh, what that does is whenever we have accidents where we have uh, multiple injuries or deaths involved this uh, software we can plug into the computer system of uh, each of the cars or the car involved in the accident and retrieve data such as the speed that the car was traveling at the time of the accident things like that so this is uh, this is going to be a very good uh, investigative tool that we can use along with what our accident reconstructionists do. And uh, the end of this month, uh, well, actually Friday, uh, we will be having a, another deputy graduating from uh, accident reconstruction school. It's a month-long school. He's been at the uh, professional development center in Charleston at the State Police Academy this month uh, to get that training. So. Uh, Deputy Steve McRoby will be another accident reconstructionist for us. And uh, because they were looking to fill a slot, they didn't charge us anything for him to get out and do the training, other than the cost of the class and staying at the academy and, and everything else was free. So, and uh, I think uh, Chief Palmer wanted to uh, mention something that uh, about the maintenance department. Just real quick, I just need to. Shout out to Bobby and his people, mm -hmm. maintenance. I had some work done in my office, um, and his people were very professional, and very skilled in what they did. I think it, it's a credit to the skilled laborers that he, that he hired. If we tried to contract that out, it would cost a lot of money. But they did a very good job, very professional. Very good. Uh, Sessions office. Thanks. I just wanted to add that when the Board of Review meets, we're going over everything with all the taxpayers that call, and if they have a certified appraisal, we take that into consideration before we refer them to you. So I don't think you're going to have that many come over here because we're working most of it out over there. I, I, th I think mm -hmm. the combination of that, and I, and I think under Mark uh, Music's leadership, yes. uh, your office over there has reached out to the taxpayer. And, Thank and, you. And I really think that that's going to be a tremendous mm -hmm. plus because people won't feel like how do these people even know what kind of a house I have and never exactly. even come and talk to me. So, uh, right. Well, we I, have deputies going door to door yeah. and Mark goes out himself when we get a phone call. And, and he's very appreciative of the support that the commission has given him. Well, you know, I think the state tax department has put him in a little bit of a predicament, uh, but we understand that. And uh, I think all of us are in agreement we're gonna continue to work with Mark because uh, we think that he has uh, some very honest intent to serve the taxpayer's best interest. But we thank you for what you all are doing.
Thank you. Talent. Yep, not today. Thank you. Chief. Nothing? Yes, sir. Uh, members of the public. Or wait a minute. Let me back up. I should. Bobby, you have anything? I just wanted to say uh, one thing. Uh, uh, thank Perry for, for what he said, but I'd like to uh, just recognize my guys themselves. I know it's their job to clear the snow and ice and uh, keep all these buildings uh, running and, and clear so people doesn't fall. And I know most people think that that's their job, but you know they're the ones that have to work outside in the minus temperatures where everybody else is in the warm. So I just wanted to, yeah. to make it known that uh, those guys have been working well, and, and as everybody can see, our parking lots and sidewalks was clear before everybody else. So I just like to recognize them for that. Their efforts, I'm sure, are appreciated by whoever's benefits right. from. But I think what's really critically important, and I think it's for people to know, that you and your department is saving the taxpayers of this county money. Tax that. dollars are being saved with every project that they're able to complete, and I, I think that speaks well of you and your department. Thank you. Janet. No, sir, not at this time. Burnett, anything else? Janet, anything? Mm -hmm. uh, the public, any members of the public have any comments? No comments by members of the public, then I would entertain a motion that we move into executive session. I would suggest that we take a 10-minute uh, yeah. break uh, to give the media a chance to talk to anybody they want to and don't have to wait around. To move, yeah. to move to go to executive session pursuant to uh, attorney commission. Applying for Applying for And do I have a second? I have a motion and a second to move into executive session. All in favor signify saying aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? <coughs> we will adjourn for 10 minutes. Don't know. I would assume them would. We're back in uh, regular session, out of executive uh, session. And uh, Tom, uh, on the agenda here, first item of consideration is consideration of adoption of bond authorizing resolution and order. Uh, it goes. Excuse me, uh, Janet. Do we have to make a motion and a second to get out of executive? Session? Move to go out of executive session. Second. Shame on me. Uh, <laughs> I have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Now we're out of executive session. Motion passed. Uh, Mr. Amon. Thank you. Um, so I'm, I'm presenting. Primarily the same information that we went over two weeks ago when I was before you for the, uh, you know, to go over the bond authorizing order. Um, you have a, a packet of information I've handed out to you. One item is the transaction summary, and then we've got a bond authorizing resolution order. We've got all the numbers for the different bond issues, just for your information purposes. And then we've got two resolutions relating to these projects that we'll take up and I'll explain. Um, but just to, to reiterate what we've gone over before, we now have you know all the final numbers on the bond issues. You know, uh, we've sharpened our pencils. We've got all the I's dotted and T's crossed. And you'll see um, at the top there the 22 million 165 for the ballpark bonds. 21 million 830 for the interchange excise tax bonds, 670 uh, for the other piece of the interchange bonds, and then the 9 million 605 tax increment revenue bonds, the other piece of the interchange, and then the 4 million 515 for the infrastructure project. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've got the same information here with respect to the districts that we've gone over previously. Um, just to uh, reiterate the structures. Um, the ballpark bonds have a variable uh, interest rate. Uh, for the first five years, we got a floor of 2.5% and a ceiling of 4%. So it'll be a daily floating rate, which, uh, oh, sorry. It's okay. Um, which uh, WVU feels will create the lowest interest cost on, on the financing of this project. Um, the final maturity date on all series of the excise tax bonds is June 1, 2043. Um, 
the redemptions uh, will start in June of 2017 as far as uh, any available revenues from the sales taxes in the district uh, are applied first, you know, to be scheduled interest payments semi-annually for that, that uh, rate that we went over. Any amounts of revenues that are available after paying the scheduled interest and after paying the administrative expenses of the district are applied to repay the principal of the bonds. So that's the basic way in which the bonds from available revenues in the district, if the district performs well, there'll be surplus revenues above the uh, interest payments that will pay down the principal of the bonds over time. We have a scheduled mandatory redemption uh, of the principal amounts, which was started in 2019. Um, so that even if those revenues weren't sufficient to start paying down principal, will nonetheless have mandatory payments of the principal that will need to be made. If the revenue is not sufficient for the sales taxes, we have this lease arrangement with WBU where they pay an additional rent that right. makes up the, the gap. 50% of the revenues are dedicated to the ballpark bonds. The other 50% from the excise taxes are dedicated to the two series of the interchange bonds with the Series C bonds being the smaller amount and wanting at a higher rate, wanting to pay that off first and leave the remaining revenues to pay off the interchange project. The 50% for the interchange side of it would be applied first to pay down the C bonds and pay those off, which they're scheduled to pay off, I believe, in 2016. Uh, and then that would leave the remaining revenues then after paid off in their entirety to be applied to repay the B bonds. Um, the United Bank is purchasing the ballpark bonds. The Division of Highways, the bonds are being uh, privately placed with the Division of Highways for both series of the interchange bonds. And then for the uh, C excise tax and B property tax, those are being placed with Mon, the developer for the project. Um, you'll see that description there, and you'll see a, a rendering of the ballpark, and then the um, the interchange piece of it, and the additional pad sites and, and extension of Town Center Drive, uh, and the additional development that would be opened up by the combination of the interchange project and the infrastructure project that would extend the road. Um, so as I mentioned before, the interchange piece of it DOA, the, the West Virginia Department of Transportation Division of Highways is paying or will uh, be the party to the design build contract. They will pay all those construction costs. The uh, bond payments when made would be a means to reimburse them over time through those payments for costs that they have expended to build that interchange. Uh, the infrastructure uh, portion of the project is, you know, uh, utilities and road work infrastructure that's needed uh, to support the additional development at the town center and the area of the ballpark and connecting to the um, new interchange. Um, we're actually proposing to close the transaction this Thursday, uh, signing all you know, uh, the documentation later today. Uh, all of the bonds are being privately placed uh, with the purchasers that I uh, described, um, not rated bonds. Uh, all the bonds are structured in that way that you know, they're mature in full at the final maturity with the exception of the ballpark bonds which, which have that mandatory redemption schedule. Um, all the bonds at the option of the county can be paid off early if you want to refinance, issue additional bonds to refinance without penalty at any time. Um, there are limitations on the ability to issue additional bonds in this district. You basically have to get the consent of the other bondholders uh, to do that because it would affect their revenue streams. Um, we have the, the placement agents, which have done a wonderful job working with uh, Monview, the master developer, to prepare a um, revenue projection for the district and a development schedule 
so that based on you know uh, future development that's expected in, in the district you know these are the revenues that we think would be generated by that development and therefore available to repay the bonds you've got your financing team uh, which is still intact, all those parties that we've gone over. Um, for each, uh, for the, the, the main security document for all the bond issues is a trust indenture. And there's a trust indenture for the ballpark uh, bonds. There's a separate indenture for the other two interchange bonds. And then a third indenture for the two series of property tax bonds. Um, the revenues, as I mentioned, uh, excise taxes, 50% are dedicated to the ballpark, the other 50% to the two interchange bonds. On the property tax bond issues, um, it's solely the incremental increases in property tax revenues that are generated by the development in the district. And the split of the application of those revenues is based upon the principal amount of the bonds. So higher principal amount, they get a higher allocation of the revenues to repay those bonds. They're all structured as drawdown bonds so that only as costs are incurred to actually pay the project costs uh, are the principal amount of the bonds utilized and interest accrue accrues only on those drawdowns. So you know, the county is not being charged for all the interest on the entire principal amount at closing. Mm -hmm. You're able to draw that down and only be charged on that portion. Um, there's a reserve, a reserve fund in place for the ballpark bonds equal to 12 months of interest. So if the revenues aren't sufficient, that reserve fund would be used to make the scheduled payments. And then if the reserve fund is utilized, WVU would make additional rent payments that would go into a special fund that would then be used to replenish the reserve if the reserve were ever completely depleted. Um, that is the basic structure of the bond issues. The official action of the county commission which would approve the issuance of all those five series of bonds and the entering into of the trust indentures which are the primary security documents and the development agreements with the WVU with the Department of Highways and with Monview that allow them to act as developer to carry out the construction of these projects for the County Commission utilizing the bond proceeds approves all, all of those arrangements and also approves the basic form of all the main closing documents Can so we, do, do we need to give you approval of each of those individually or no, is it group? I want to briefly go through the order and then the order is self-contained and approving everything for the transaction. All the all the all the all, docu the, all the main documents. This might be this might be the time that uh, we discuss the interchange and the status of the DOH. Okay. Before you start to be that order, sure. as you brought up the last time. Sure. Uh, Go ahead. Okay, as um, he advised us last time, that the DOH. Uh, is totally behind the, the interchange. Uh, they're in the process, uh, they're in the process of finalizing everything. Uh, they had the public hearing uh, two weeks ago. Uh, after that public hearing, there's a, there's a 30 day comment period that people can make comments. I had asked Greg Bailey, the engineer and the primary person up here for the public hearing. Uh, for the DOH that he advised us before we vote on this as to what came out of the public comments and, and what the status was. <laughs> he sent me he sent me an email that I, I read last night when I got home late um, that uh, said that the pu public comments uh, uh, to date have been positive. Uh, most of the comments uh, were uh, more questions as to how how the traffic was going to to, to feed in. Uh, he saw nothing in the public comments that would suggest that it would be a deterrent to the the federal Department of Highways approval, which is what this public hearing is for, is to get that final okay on this. Uh, 
and he saw nothing in there that any of them sees as, as anything that will prevent this interchange from going through. Uh, and finally, that a large portion of the comments were urging us, the elected officials, to continue our work with the DOH to help dissolve, trans, uh, resolve transportation problems in Montague County. Uh, so I thought that was that was a, a good note because here here we passed a, we passed a resolution, Tom, or a, a motion Tom brought up about a letter about the pilot. So we're we're already doing what the the public is saying they expect us to do to, to help work with the DOH. So uh, I had. Uh, I'd ask that he sent me this information so I could report it to the commission that uh, they still feel confident there's not going to be any deterrent to that interchange going in. Good. So, as the commissioner stated, although we can have no definitive assurances from DOH, I mean, they have a statutory process, a NEPA process that they have to go through that involves the public hearing and then the comment period, and then they evaluate all that information and determine whether they can and get the final approvals to move forward. And they feel pretty comfortable based at least on the public hearing and the comment period that's run this far that they're not you know, getting any material adverse feedback that makes them uncomfortable. Um, so that although the county is, you know, when we close on these bond issues, you know, you'll be committed on the ballpark on all phases of the project. Um, we can't have certainty that the interchange uh, final approvals will have come through mm -hmm. at, at that point in time. Um, with respect to the order, I'll just hit, hit the highlights. We've been through it at the last meeting. Um, you know, it, section two is approving the issuance of the ballpark bonds and the main terms, you know, the principal amount, 22165 that variable interest rate that we talked about and, and the maturity date of June 1, 2043. The uh, Series B for the uh, interchange, 21,830,000 at that 3.25% rate uh, with the maturity of June 1, 2043 as well. Uh, the C excise tax bond, that smaller portion, 670,000, 6% rate, same principal maturity. And then on the property tax bonds, the A series for the interchange project, 9,605 at the same 3.25% rate for the other uh, excise tax bonds for the interchange. The June 1, 2042 maturity, a year shorter because statutorily that district was created a little bit before the excise tax district and therefore we can't, we have a 30 year life on that district and that's as far as we can go out. Um, the Series B property tax bonds, that's for the infrastructure project, 4515 6% rate, that same June 1, 2042 maturity. And then there's a approval for the different um, security for all the bond issues. As I mentioned before, 50% of the excise tax revenues for the ballpark bonds, also the additional rent payments from WVU pursuant to the uh, lease agreement or the lease arrangement. Um, the other two series of excise tax bonds for the interchange project has that the other 50% of revenues dedicated to repayment of those two issues with first priority going to the C bonds to pay those off um, and then allow the funds, the 50% to be available for the B bonds. Uh, the two series of property tax bonds um, it's a split of solely repayable from incremental increases in property taxes. Those are the property tax revenues, the TIF revenues, uh, to be applied to the two series based upon the principal amount so that there's an equitable application. Um, you've got the, the main um, documents for the transaction. Uh, which are the, the trust in, starting in section five, approval of the ballpark indenture. And that is the arrangement I described where it's a document between the county and the bond trustee where the trustee you know, acts as a fiduciary to collect these revenue streams on a monthly basis from the county 
uh, and make the payments to the bondholders. It's the same basic structure under each indenture. Uh, with the excise tax bonds, you have to monthly, the county will be required to monthly requisition the fund balance that's at the treasurer's office uh, and ask that that be sent by the treasurer's office to the bond trustee. Uh, approximately by the 20th of, of every month, you should know what's in the account, and then you then have to the end of the month to request that that transfer be made. That way the monies are there with the bond trustee. Uh, with the property tax revenues, that's that TIF revenue fund is a local account of the county commission uh, for this district. And um, shortly before the bond payments, I think it's made on, on or before May 15th and November 15th of every year, you agree to transfer whatever's in that TIF fund to the bond trustee so they can make it so they can make the payments on the bonds. So that's the trust indentures. Um, and then it approves the development agreements. Of course, you have a, a master development agreement with Monview where they agree to serve as the you know, overarching developer for the entire, for both districts and for the entire project. You have a separate agreement for that. Uh, you have an agreement, a ballpark development agreement uh, with WVU and with your master developer where WVU agrees to build the ballpark. And, and the county agrees to utilize the proceeds of the bonds to pay for those costs. The interchange uh, development agreement with Department of Highways and Master Developer and the Bond Trustee, uh, where DOH agrees to this arrangement where they will build the interchange and finance those costs and be reimbursed from payments on the bonds. And then that infrastructure agreement with Monview. Um, where you all agree to issue the bonds to pay for the cost of that infrastructure work and they agree to carry that out to, to construct those improvements. Um, you've got bond purchase agreements for each and all of the series of bonds to be approved as to the form of those documents. Um, you've got that ground lease arrangement with WVU where they uh, will own the real property for the ballpark and lease that to the county commission. Um, the lease purchase agreement where the county owns the improvements and leases those improvements to WVU and they agree to make this additional rent payment that uh, is available if the revenues aren't sufficient to pay the bonds. The only change on that document from what I had submitted in the packet when I was up here two weeks ago is we've got I distributed a black line and I wanted to just go over a couple of items briefly with you. Um, you can see some changes that are made in <coughs> characterizing the lease purchase arrangement with respect to the ballpark. And then on um, the only open item that we had on the agreement was the scheduled lease payments. Mm -hmm. And um, we have talked about different structures as to what that might be over time and it's had different iterations but as WVU is meeting and making their final arrangements with the minor league team they're getting a more concrete structure as to you know how that operation and arrangement would work as between them and the minor league team um, so they are able now to provide you know with a lease payment structure which they feel will work best for the ballpark based on their agreement with the minor league club and um, what they've agreed to do is that their arrangement WVU's arrangement with the minor league team will have a some fixed rental payment amount that the minor league club would agree to pay to WVU and there will also be a bonus rental structure Right now, it's looking as though that would be based on revenues in the ballpark, so that if those revenues are over a certain level, WVU would be able to share in those profits with the club. And what WVU is willing to do is, in this agreement, uh, provide that the annual lease payment uh, would be such that they would pass along all of the um, rental, you know, fixed rental and bonus rental compensation that they get from, from the minor league club to the county commission. Um, and they'll also agree that um, 
to a fixed minimum amount for that compensation to be at least $25,000. So that the county gets at least $25,000 every year as a fixed rental payment from WVU for their leasing of the ballpark under the agreement. Any questions about any of that? Um, the only other things are um, there's a also is a use agreement for the ballpark and um, this is designed to extend beyond the life of the bonds and to be an agreement that's a long-term agreement and the WVU agrees that they will undertake the responsibility to operate and maintain the ballpark. Now they may do that through other arrangements with third parties, a minor league clean, a, a minor league ball club or possibly other parties. Um, it provides for the establishment of a scheduling committee where the county, the town of Granville and WVU would each have the ability to appoint representatives to this committee once the priority use for baseball is established with, by the minor league club and WVU and any other intercollegiate program that's utilizing the park, once we know what the open dates are, then the scheduling committee would meet and schedule what's called town and county events for, you know, um, where the ballpark could be utilized for you know, any community event that the town of Granville or the county would like to see the ballpark used for. And that would be rent free uh, for a town or county event. Uh, there's also provisions for you know how revenues would be split, and for um, town and county events, the county would have the ability to share in concession uh, revenues at the ballpark. Also, any parking revenues at the ballpark. You get any um, any ticket sales. You have the right to, you know, those payments in their entirety. Uh, there's some sharing of revenues with respect to uh, parking and concession rights and things like that because WVU maintains sole rights to sell food and beverage at the ballpark. Um, there's an agreement in there. I know it was important to you all that, um, that they have a commitment to that the ballpark be an affordable you know, that the pricing structure be affordable for families and residents of the county and the state. There's a provision in there that provides that they'll make every effort to make the events affordable and the pricing structure uh, affordable. That's, any questions on that, that arrangement? Okay. Uh, the rest of it is mainly authorizing the uh, president of the commission to sign all the closing documents and for the um, commission and its employees to, you know, gives them authority to carry out all of the terms of the agreements. I'd like to say, Tom, that uh, it's been a lot of months and someone sitting back here for the first time or, or, or watching uh, on the YouTube or the film, they might think, well, Wow, you know, look at all this stuff. You know, we're gonna do all. This. We've been working on this stuff for for months and months, and talk about months, and months. And, and I wanted to take the opportunity to to commend you uh, for keeping uh, the commissioners, uh, these three commissioners, and the prior commissioner we had, because it started a long time ago. Uh, all our individual concerns in the forefront, and I think you've done an admirable job in dealing with all aspects of the lease arrangements, use arrangements, and uh, the, the cost, uh, keeping the cost down, all those issues, uh, actually too numerous to mention, that, uh, that protects the, the, uh, the ball field, not only for its primary use, but for the citizens of this county to use to, to make a better, uh, 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 better, better life in this community. Thank you. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. I, I also would like to say that um, I really uh, truly feel that every member of the, that was on this team, you know, the placement agents, Piper Jaffray, the uh, developer, Monview, Jason Donahue, 
uh, Brian Helmick and Carrie Cecil with Spillman and representing uh, Montview, the developer in this. Um, and I'm sure I'm going to miss a bunch of people. All the WVU people. All the WVU folks, the people, the folks at Department of Highways, Greg Bailey, yeah. and all, I mean, they've been great to work with. Without, I think it, perhaps if any member of this team had been replaced with someone else, I don't know that this project would have got to where it is right now. So, I, I Does really. That include us? <laughs> you, you know, one point needs made uh, that that although this is a very uh, significant uh, project uh, in, in in the way that it's been cooperative uh, between the university, between the developer, even Jason and uh, <laughs> and the county commission, uh, and I and I think what we need to make sure we don't forget is that we broke new ground with this project in terms of working relationships, Piper Jaffe. Uh, and, and I think we're going to find that the future will tell us that this project had a significant impact on future relationships and working together and, and being able to, uh, through cooperative efforts, accomplish more than any of us could individually. Absolutely. Oh. Nope, I'm ready to move on. Okay, do you want to frame uh, our motion for us? Uh, I was going to move that we adopt the resolution uh, order as uh, presented. Good. And Second. Authorize the uh, <laughs> uh, president. <laughs> of the You're not going to restate everything? And authorize the president to sign the necessary documents to complete closure okay. on this. That means second. I can show up at 5 o'clock. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much. Just a couple of clean up items. Um, there are two reimbursement resolutions. These are just sort of prophylactic type measures that these relate to um, the possibility down the road. You know, all these bonds are being issued on a taxable basis for various reasons. There may be opportunities down the road to refinance these bonds on a tax exempt basis and this would give just the county the flexibility to be able to do that down the road you've got one resolution for the uh, ballpark right. that allows for um, expenditures relating to the ballpark that have been incurred up to this point in time i think there's a like a 60 day look back um, to be paid out of the bond, and, and are, that will be paid going forward to be reimbursed out of the proceeds of the bonds. Same arrangement for the interchange, costs relating to the interchange that have been incurred up to this point and will be incurred going forward and paid by DOH that, you know, the bonds can be used to reimburse those costs. The so, motion on that? On, on uh, both, please. I, yes. I move that uh, we uh, approve and authorize the reimbursement resolutions on these two projects. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Anything else? I think that'll do it. Thank <laughs> you. You, okay. might wanna, you might want to let Jason and Brian know. If they want to have anything to comment on, or even do, I, do I have to do that? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I'm only joking. <laughs> Everyone knows that. Uh, any comment, Brian? Uh, no, just thank you so much. It's been wonderful uh, to get to the stage, and you guys have been instrumental in changing the future of, of quite honestly, Mon County, but the state. The comments we get out of the state capitol is that this is a model that the rest of the state ought to be modern, modeling their projects after and growth after. Thank you. Thank you very much. Jason? I will. I got started. I knew you were going to say something. You know, from, from, from the, I guess the, the folks that started with an idea, I mean, it was uh, just an idea. And to work as closely as we have with everybody, including the commissions, um, and to explain how it could work and how it could benefit different parties and different groups and to get different municipalities and different county the county commission the wbu to get everybody to go and make this happen and to see it come to fruition today i have to tell you it's just extremely gratifying and i i believe in the project i've always believed in the project and i offer our sincere thanks and appreciation to 
the effort that you guys put into it because it, 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 it was a hard process. It should be a hard process. We've always contended that because it's the public tax dollars and that should be protected. And we respect that and, 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 and we're going to work as hard and I hope you guys have seen that we're going to work as hard as we can from the developer side to make sure those tax dollars are spent as wisely as possible and as efficiently as possible so that we can accomplish the goals that we agreed to do. So um, personally, on behalf of Monview, I, I just can't say enough about how much we appreciate your all uh, willingness to roll up your sleeves, work with us, support us, fight with us when necessary, fight with, with, on our side when necessary. Uh, and and, and uh, I believe, I just told Brian that, you know, I've I'm, I'm not been a long time resident of Mon County, but I do believe that it's, it's helped lay the foundation for other things and uh, that I think that we can realize a phenomenal potential by doing other things the way we did this deal. And I think that we can all benefit from that. So thank you. Well, were you here when uh, I reported on Greg Bailey's email that a lot of comments was that they expect us three to continue to work? I not only throughout the county, but on the west side and make the west side uh, development. I, I, you know, here's, here's, the, uh, here's the bottom line. Things don't get done unless they get done. I mean, you can talk yourself in a circle, but unless it actually somebody works to make it happen, it's not going to happen. And so I think that we see the fruits of the labor when we put forth the effort to make something happen. So I think we can make other things happen and uh, not just on this project but you know throughout the county and and, and and I think Brian's right throughout the state I think we have a moral obligation to lead for the community as well as the state um, for a bunch of reasons so but I would heartful you know with all the joy I can tell you yeah. I'm thrilled to death and, and, and very appreciative thank you Jason Joe, do you have anything uh, common, or Mary? We again, it's uh, two years since we were first approached about the idea. Uh, this would far and away be the most uh, complicated transaction we've had to work on. Uh, a lot of moving parts, but it's a real tribute to the team, uh, to the county, your staff, the assessor's office. Uh, you know, to to get to this point uh, with its complexities and, and very favorable bond terms. You know, we, again, we just want to thank you for having that opportunity. We think it's going to be a very successful product project. And, um, and as Rear A. Brian said, we think it's a model uh, for other economic development projects in the state, one that we're even maybe looking at uh, that, you know, to, to, to I think, get, get the various bodies to uh, cooperate from the state to the county, university, and others. It was a terrific project to work on. Well, thank you for having the opportunity to uh, work on that as your uh, place major. Yeah, see, I just want to reiterate, I want to thank the commission because without you this would not have been possible and, and uh, we're real appreciative and uh, I can't wait to see the first ball at the, oh, now at the ballpark. I don't know who they'll let do that, but maybe one of you, I don't we're, know. We're going to draft Bill to do it. <laughs> well, I've, al I've already asked uh, that we be employed as auditors to sample the concessions <laughs> <laughs> to Taste make testers. sure, make sure that the uh, paying public has a good viewing <laughs> uh, observation points. Uh, I haven't got any response yet, but uh. <laughs> but if we throw it in, we might have to be a tag throw. Yeah, I know. Throw it to me, and I'll throw it to Bob, Tom, and Tom will throw it across the plate. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if it's appropriate or not, but I'm going to do it anyway. Thank you. <laughs> Jason, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Are we waiting to adjourn? Uh, any other uh, comments? I move we adjourn. Second. I have a movement for adjournment and a second. All in favor, signify I'm saying aye. 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 Opposed. Better not be. <laughs> We're adjourned. <laughs> We're done.